Welcome to Proper Wealth with me, Paul Mahoney, the show where we discuss all things wealth creation with a focus on property. Joining me today is Daniel Owen Parr from Together, and we're talking about auctions. Welcome, Daniel. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, so auctions, uh, I suppose perhaps if we can start off with what they are. Yeah, um, auctions or property auctions as we're discussing today, um, they, they're a place where individuals can purchase properties that normally you wouldn't find in a normal estate agent. Uh, normally a reason by that would be because there's a speed that want to sell them or there may be some slight idiosyncrasy with them. So it might be that they've got a problem with one part of them that you wouldn't normally be able to sell them easily. So right. you go to a property auction and you're able then to see as many people in the auction there to bid on it to allow um, that to sell at a, a reasonable price to get it away. But normally they're done within 28 days, once, once okay. somebody purchased something. So like. it's usually about, about speed of yes. sale, yes. whether yeah. that be they need it to happen quickly or there's something wrong with it, so it can't go through yeah, the whole market. Yeah, there's, there's, not, there's normally something, uh, you know, a lot of it is standard properties that are being sold there, right. but they will have slight issues somewhere along the lines. So okay. I know we'll come a little bit later in some of the rules about making sure before you go to an auction, but yeah, yeah you really need to be aware what you're actually buying when you go to Fair an auction. Fair enough. So, so you mentioned potentially having something different or, or wrong with the properties that might make them go to auction. What's some examples of that? You know, what, what are the potential reasons that properties would be at auction? Well, one of them, it could have been um, taken back uh, by a lender, right. possibly. Um, so uh, that is a reason why a lender would put it into an auction to sell it quickly right. to, to get the money back rather than putting it on a, an elongated process okay. through an agent. Meaning uh, it's a you know, perfectly good property. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just, it's just for whatever reason, uh, the lender has decided to take it back. It could be the owner of the property wants to sell it and maybe because they are moving abroad or uh, their circumstances have changed and they want to uh, allow themselves yeah. to get that money quickly rather than allowing, once again, an agent to maybe take that a little bit okay. longer. Do deceased estates go to auction? They can do, yeah. yeah. That's, that can be uh, one of the reasons. Or it can be something simple as uh, Japanese knotweed, for instance. Right. So um, they're, they're wanting to sell that property and to get it off their hands as soon as they possibly can. And how, how does the whole auction process work? So normally what you would have is uh, the property would be placed into the auction uh, and they would have some form of catalogue, either online or physical, um, which would then show people what's, what's being displayed at that auction. Yeah. And you know, around the country there are auctions where they maybe have five, six or seven lots in there, all the way up to the very large ones in London that could be in excess of a couple of hundred lots. Okay. Uh, so people will, will look at the properties there and they can range varying different types to a small uh, two up two down terrace in northern England, yeah. all the way to a £10 million commercial property in and around the M25. Okay. Um, what they will do at that point is they will allow viewings. So um, they would normally have somebody from the auction would go to the property at a designated time. Uh, people would have a look around that property and they've gotten their opportunity then to, to do their due diligence okay. as such. So maybe if they want to bring somebody who's got property expertise, valuer or surveyor or something like that, can come and have a look at it at the same mm. time. And then they normally will put the legal packs online right. uh, and that gives you time to view that legal pack um, and uh, bring up any um, anything that you think may be an issue with uh, some form of legal counsel, either okay. a solicitor or conveyancer. On right. That. So, so the, the 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 potential buyer would would want to do all of that before going to the auction, I assume. Yes, uh, I, I would strongly recommend. If I was going to give yeah. one one piece of advice, is do your due diligence and do it again, right. and really make sure you understand what you're purchasing, okay. um, and really understands the legal pack to have any restrictions on the title. Um, if it's a, for instance, a leasehold property, how long is the lease left on it? Yeah. Um, so there's a number of things that you would want to discuss with some form of legal counsel to okay. make sure that you're getting what you think you're getting, because very rarely would you ever get a true bargain in something like that. Okay. There's normally normally something that you'd need to then sort out later down the line. Okay. And so as a bit of a checklist, if someone's yeah. planning to go to an auction or considering it as an, as an option, yeah. um, I suppose you mentioned about viewing the property themselves. Yes. Potentially having a surveyor view the property also, make sure it's structurally sound, or if it's not, find out why not. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned before about Japanese knotweed, that might be a reason, and I assume a surveyor would pick that up? Yes, and, and the, you know, with Japanese, what we've got to be really careful because uh, you're also liable if you purchase that property, if it goes onto somebody else's land, you are then liable to actually right. clear that and it can be quite invasive. So okay. you'll be really careful. Does, does the vendor or the auction house need to disclose things like that? 
they can uh, they can disclose as much as they're aware of. Right. Um, so, for instance, if they've been given this property by a bank or some lender to to sell on their behalf, or it could be a local authority maybe selling it, um, they will have as much information as they have. But it's that the old adage: buyer beware. Right. You really must do your own due okay, diligence. So it, it is your own responsibility yes. to find those things out. So, okay, well, it sounds like you'd be mad not to get a survey, a survey done then. <laughs> you, you, you can, and, and if you if you know about property, yeah. you can go around okay. and see yeah. the stuff. So, for an example, for me, um, a client that I've seen before that purchased the property, um, the air bricks were all blocked off. Right. Um, so he walked into the property, and uh, next minute he was about four foot down. Oh well, yeah. because the all the floorboards had rotten. Right. So because it, the, the all all the air bricks had been covered up, so yeah. there's no circulation. So you okay. just got to really make sure you know what you're doing. If okay. you don't, get a professional to come with you. Okay. And, and you mentioned about viewing the legal pack. I assume most people probably aren't familiar with what a legal pack actually means. So perhaps having a solicitor view that as well. Yeah. Um, and so far as actually purchasing, you know, the purchasing power at the auction. Yeah. Um, you know, from a lender's perspective, how does that process work, actually getting into the position of having the money to buy? Um, well, the next stage really is, is actually the auction itself. Yep. And, and really, you've got two main sorts of auctions. You've got the, the open forum auction, where mm. um, most people have seen under you know, varying different programs on television, uh, which will show you that process live. And you may have a, a room with 50, 100, 200 people in, you'll have a, a main individual stood at the top yeah. with a gavel, with the little sort of wooden hammer he uses or she uses, and then that's the simple thing that you normally see. But now with the revolution of, of digital and mm. online, we're seeing more and more online auctions, okay. um, and that's a slightly slightly different way of doing it. With, with an online auction, do people still attend Physically or, or not? It's completely online? No, uh, oh. completely online. The ones that we see are completely online. Okay. So you would sign into some form of um, secure website yeah. where you can normally view uh, or see the auction actually happening okay. um, live. And then you can make bids. But you can also make bids by telephone to, a, to, a, to a, what we call a normal auction mm. where you'd have it in a, you know, a large room somewhere. Um, yeah. So for, for that stage, you really would need to attend. And, and one of my suggestions would be actually attending one prior to purchasing it okay Getting just to get it. yeah get yeah. a familiar because it is it is a um it's a really quite an exciting experience when you see people bidding against each other over a property yeah um, because you can you can actually feel the tension in the room at the time yeah um and you, you varying different people you get there it's a really real microcosm of of society when you go to an auction yeah well the auction is they try to draw up as much yeah, excitement yeah. As, as much as they and, can and, and that's and that's the really interesting thing yeah. about it when you get a really good auctioneer, mm. no, it is a quite an exciting. You know, and I've I've seen auctions myself where properties have gone for hundred thousand pound more than you'd think because two people are bidding against each other and yeah. everybody's watching and the whole room sort of holding their breath. I, to I see just how, mentioned to you know I, I bid in an auction yeah. two weeks ago and yeah. it went for a hundred grand more yeah. than than expected and. Yeah, I suppose it's just about who turns up, isn't it? Yes, very much on that. And you, you will see maybe 100 people will go to the viewing, 50 people will, um, will download the legal pack, and you may only have five or six at the auction, and maybe only in, in the end two will actually bid mm. um, on it. But when you've got two people bidding against each other, that's quite an exciting thing to see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and the auctioneer tends to sort of play on it, don't they? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a good auctioneer will do that. It's a bit of theatre around it. And that's yeah. that's the enjoyable part. And that's why I say always go and see one first. So then you get to understand the atmosphere and how things are done. Yeah. And if you actually speak to the auctioneer uh, prior to the auction, they're, they're, most of them will be very, very helpful. Um, so they will talk you through that process and how you would actually do it. So okay. um, it's always worth speaking to an auctioneer. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so we going back to that checklist. You know, viewing the property yourself, perhaps having a survey, getting potentially some legal advice on the legal pack, understanding the property fully from all of that, and yeah. maybe talk attending an auction as a sort of dummy run. Yes. And speaking with an auctioneer. Yes. Do you think that that's a pretty good checklist for sort of putting yes. people in a a strong informed position for, yes. for then going to buy. And I think then the next stage really leading on is how you're actually going to buy the property. Right. Are you going to use finance or have you got the actual cash yeah, uh, okay. to purchase that? Yeah, okay. And um, what, what would be the mix between you know people buying cash or, or people financing auction properties? So what we see, about 70% are using cash in the marketplace. 30% um, will use some sort of uh, funding to yeah, do okay. that. Is that affected at all? Uh, Geographically, you know, in different locations, has that changed or? 
Yes, we will see more people using finance in the larger cities. Right. So your Birmingham's, Manchester, Leeds, London, the more outlying areas, more rural areas, you see a lot more cash being used. Okay, is that mainly determined by the prices of the properties? You know, yeah, you will you'll get prices, you know, if you're getting properties 40, 50, 60,000 yeah. pounds, then more people will probably want to use their own cash. Right. Once they get higher properties, which are normally in the city areas, that's when you would normally need some form of finance. Very few people have the cash to purchase something that's that okay. price. Well, thanks, Daniel. That was great. We need to go to a break. Join us after the break for more on property auctions. Welcome back to Proper Wealth with me, Paul Mahoney. I'm joined by Daniel Owen Parr, and we're talking about property auctions. So, Daniel, we spoke before the break about some, a checklist that people can follow when they're thinking about going to an auction, how to put themselves in an informed position and actually you know, successfully bid, I suppose. Yeah. Um, let's talk a bit about the auction market then, you know, where, where we currently stand. Where is the auction market at at the moment? What, what would you say is the current state of the market? Well, we've seen over a number of years um, a real growth in the auction market. Um, that is sort of starting to tailor off slightly okay. with the dreaded B word uh, right. that's going on. Um, it, it, ha it is causing the sentiment to be drained out of the market a little bit. Okay. So we have seen, um, you know, the last set of figures I saw, um, the London market was down by about 17% year on year. Mm. So we are seeing a reduction in number of lots and also the number of lots that come into market, the amount that's actually selling has also reduced quite okay. a lot as well. So it, not, not over the entire country. We yeah. are seeing some of the regional auctions really doing... They're still doing reasonably well, yeah. but they're your smaller standard two up, two downs, three bedroom semis or flats type market. Okay. But when it's a larger commercial property or portfolios, there's not as many of them coming to market. And if they are coming to market, they don't normally all sell for the price you expect them to do. So Okay. And I, I suppose, you know, you mentioned about the, the dreaded B word, but I, look, I suppose that's probably just people sitting on their hands for a little yeah. bit, isn't it? Um, not really due to anything else, uh, I would assume. No, no it's, there's, there's still a healthy market out yeah. there. And we're, we're still seeing a lot of uh, people coming to ourselves and their other lenders looking for finance um, to, to buy that property. I don't see the changes in taxation and, and rules over the last two or three years has really died that down too much. Okay. All right. I suppose the, when you think of auctions, you kind of think of getting a good deal, don't you? Is there a... Is there a general understanding of how much of a good deal you might get at an auction so far as a discount or whatever that might be, or is it sort of very much case by case? Case by case, but you would hope to get between 10 and 20% less than you would pay on the open market okay. normally. Um, but it depends, as we, we talked uh, previously, uh, how many people actually attend that auction and how much competition you've got with other other people bidding on it yeah. will drive that price much higher. So a uh, clever auctioneer would have as, as many people bidding that on that property. So they would set the guide price at a, at a level to, to drive enough interest and enough people to come and visit it and mm. then bid on the day. That's what they're trying to do. Um, if you've got less people in there, then it probably won't go for the price they expect. So you might mm. nip it. And one of the little idiosyncrasies is, is around uh, a property that's bought in a London auction that is actually based in one of the regions. You would normally get that at a cheaper price right. than actually. So if you, for instance, there was a property from Manchester in a London auction, you would probably get that cheaper than if okay. that was in Manchester. So you can sort of get a deal yeah. simply based upon who's there. Yeah, who's there and where the property's based itself. Yeah, okay, that's, that's really interesting. Um, so you mentioned before the break about people, whether they buy cash or, or whether they use finance. If someone was considering using finance for an auction purchase, what, what's the process they need to go through to, uh, I suppose, get the confidence they can actually get it? Yeah, what you would normally do is you would approach a lender um, or an intermediary of some sort looking for a decision in principle. Okay. So what that basically means is this is the property, this is what I, this is the guide price, so we'll, we'll say £100,000 the guide price. A lender would normally ask them, how much are you willing to bid up to? So you said, well, I might pay up to 130. Yeah. So we would do some form of checks on the individual around, is that property worth? So you can do either an online valuation right. or there are very different tools that we can give as a guide to, will that, will that actually value up at 130,000 yeah. pounds? You would do a check on the individual to make sure they can actually um, afford to, to make the payments on whatever the loan is. Yeah. Um, 
and do a, uh, just a normal credit check just to make sure okay. that they're there. Once you've done that type of, of stuff, that is all you would need to take. So you'd have some form of piece of paper saying, we will lend you up to X amount okay. like if you bid up to £130,000, for instance. Okay. All right. So it's a mix of the loan to value of the property, yeah. the person's affordability or serviceability, yeah. and their credit record. Yes. Okay. So if you're kind of ticking in those boxes, you can be pretty comfortable in organizing finance and purchasing with finance. Yes. Okay. Um, what's the minimum that someone can borrow for, for auction finance? It goes lender by lender, but normally um, you wouldn't see much below sort of £26,000 okay. really. But um, there are lenders out there that will do less than that. Uh, right. But averagely, most lenders will go 26000 upwards. Okay. And so we spoke about the loan to value. What are the general loan to values for buying at an auction? So loan to values for, for most lenders would be uh, residential, normal, you two up, two downs. The standard market, you would probably go 75, 80% maximum okay. on that, of, of the actual value of the property. Right. So if someone's buying a £100,000 um, flat somewhere, yeah. um, they could potentially borrow up to 75 to 80% of that. Yeah. Oh, really interesting. So on the day, um, if you are lucky enough to win the property, you would normally put down either 10% of the value of the property, yeah. minimum £2,000. Okay. So that's something that the person that's purchasing it would have to do on the day. Okay. And then you would normally have roughly 28 days. Most of them work on 28 days. There are some that are less for yeah. certain reasons, and that's why you do the v legal pack beforehand to make sure you understand, is it seven days, is it 14, is it 28? And uh, so, so let's say I went to the auction, I bought yep. that £100,000 property, I put down my ten grand as a deposit, I'm planning to borrow 75%, so £75,000. Yep. Um, I'm then committed to buying that property, aren't I, once I put down my, my deposit? So uh, when you bid on it, when the auctioneer hits the gavel on, on the table, yep. you've then exchanged contracts. Right. So it's yep. a legally binding, so you then have, we'll say 28 days, which is the average, to, to complete that transaction in. Now, there are... Um, you are allowed to go 10 days further over that, which okay. you can be charged interest on. But once you reach that, the end of that 10th day, then um, they can withdraw that contract. Okay. And then they can sue you for what's called deficit of sale. Right. So you've bought it for £100,000. They put it in the next auction and only get 80, for instance. Right. You can be then sued for that 20,000 difference between it. So it's okay. imperative you know you've got funding or you have the cash right. for when you actually so, go. So I suppose it's quite sensible then to get that decision in yeah. principle prior and then move quite quickly yes within 38 days is that right uh, well you, you've got the 28 days but yeah you're right yeah. um you don't particularly want to go into that the 10 days extra okay. on the back of there but they're there just in case for whatever reason if something is thrown up within mm. the actual transaction that you weren't aware of at the start and yeah. it does happen from time to time but you really want to complete so you want a lender who you're confident with that will allow you to complete within 28 days yeah, okay. and you also need a, a good solicitor who is able to do that type of work because mm. it's very different from your standard bank lending where you normally can have months to actually complete a transaction. You've got days because when you think about it, it's actually 20 working days, not 28 days right, because yeah. the, you know it's weekend stuff. So you've got 20, day, 20 days to complete on. So it has to be very, very quick. Yes, okay. And, and I assume lenders are equipped yes. to, to do that within that sort of 20 day period. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, look, I think we've we've covered quite a lot there so far as a checklist, um, how people can go at getting finance, a little example there of what um, someone could look to do. Um, have you got some case studies, you know, perhaps some real life examples of where auctions have worked quite well for people? Yes. Um, what you see when you go to an auction is a lot of standard properties, but you do now from time to time get some, some really quirky properties. So we've seen where... Um, we have funded uh, an individual who's bought uh, a former public toilet. Okay. Yes, <laughs> right. It's, it's, it, 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 was, it was fascinating to see because how do you value a former public toilet? Yeah. But um, yes, we've, we've lent against uh, former public toilets. Um, Just out of interest, what did they do with it? Um, well, we've done it twice now. One of them was turned into a bar. Um, and another one was turned into a, to a retail shop. It's called the Lou or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't actually know what it's called, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it can be something like a public toilet. It can be pieces of land where we've seen individuals who who want to develop their own property, for instance, and build on there. You know, okay. sort of a bit of a life's dream, yeah. uh, all the way through to developing a number of properties on there um, as a as a normal developer would do. So you yeah. get uh, properties like that. Yes, you get your standard properties. So um, you can have um, a property, in, say, in Hull, for instance, where it's worth one hundred and 
£20,000. We've lent 80000 to help them purchase it. Yeah. And within that, what they're doing is they're building a portfolio um, because they're looking for rental income um, rather than actual capital growth yeah. um, because the properties are relatively cheap in, in compared to the nationwide value of property uh, and you're still getting um, a good rent, you know, six, seven hundred pounds per mm. month on the back of it. Excellent. Well, look, I found that very interesting. I think it's a great opportunity, as I mentioned, for people that are looking to get involved in being a bit more proactive. Yeah. That's all we've got time for now, though. So thanks for joining me. No, thank you and, very and much. And thank you for watching Proper Wealth with me, Paul Mahoney, the show where we cover all things wealth creation with a focus on property. Mm.